Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. I'm Madison and today I want to talk to you about five different house plants that I think every plant parent should grow, especially the new plant parents, because they're going to really help better you as a plant parent overall. They're going to teach you things and they're going to help you grow that green thumb even faster. So let's just dive into it. But before we get too deep in, I just want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave me a thumbs up if you like this kind of content and definitely comment down below of what house plant you agree with the most or what you disagree with the most. <laughs> okay, so the first plant that I have to talk to you guys about today is the one that I actually do not have in my collection anymore. I have since moved along from this plant. It is on now to a more loving home than I can give it. Um, but I did love this plant for a really, really long time. So I'm gonna pop a picture up over here for you. I am talking about the peace lily. So this is a house plant that I think every single plant parent should own because it is so dramatic. Oh, so dramatic. I will find a picture of a very thirsty peace lily here. I'm sure they will be easy to find. They will be a plenty out there. Peace lilies are such dramatic house plants. They will let you know when they're thirsty by getting very, very droopy looking and sad. But have no fear, after you water that sucker within a few hours, maybe a day, if it really is super, super thirsty, that sucker will plump back up and just be back to normal in no time. It's pretty amazing, honestly. So I think these plants are so awesome because it really just kind of teaches you to be on the lookout for droopy leaves and really is a good example of what droopy leaves look like and feel like. Although I will say for most plant leaves, when they get droopy, they will also get really thin feeling leaves as well. I will say that the Peace Lily doesn't do that quite as much in my experience, but it does get very, very droopy. So I feel like it's a great plant for new plant parents, especially because it teaches you, like I said, to be on the lookout for those droopy leaves and to realize like, okay, that's what that means. When the leaves are really droopy, it means that we are probably thirsty and also maybe want a feed in there as well, but mainly a thirsty plant is a droopy plant. So definitely be on the lookout for a peace lily at your local big box store, at your local nursery, anything like that. You will be able to find them for a very good price. So that's another great reason for new plant parents to try peace lily is if you do end up killing it somehow for some reason, if you just wait way too long to feed it and water it or something, or you water it way too much, which honestly, I don't know if you could overwater a peace lily. Let's be real. <laughs> they love water. But if you do find yourself killing one of them, they're going to be very easy to replace, but I really don't think you will. So I feel like if you've been kind of struggling to know when to water, when not to water, maybe grab a peace lily because she might help you figure that out. Okay. So the next plant that I have to talk to you about, I actually do have, well, I have the rest of these. So let's see, I'm going to grab this one because I feel like I've talked about this guy pretty recently. So I just will make it kind of quick. But the next plant that I want to talk to you guys about is this gorgeous, gorgeous guy here. This is a marble queen pothos. I feel like everyone, everyone needs to grow a pothos at some point in their life. But I, in particular, wanted to call out the marble queen pothos because it is just so, so beautiful. Like, look at those colors. Every leaf is so different and just so stunning. And I feel like this really gives any new plant parent or any plant parent really the ability to have a gorgeously variegated plant without having a crazy, crazy high price tag. And I just love a leaf where you like never know what you're gonna get. You know, this is kind of kind of that kind of plant. And like I think I'm sure I mentioned um, in the other video that I showcased this guy in recently, you can grow these in so many different ways. So not only can they trail like your standard trailing house plant, but you can also um, tack these onto a wall. You can grow these up a moss pole, up a wood plank, up pretty much anything. They will attach themselves with the aerial roots and then eventually their leaves will get bigger. And really it does not take long for the leaves to start sizing up once they start being able to grow. So it's just a really cool plant that kind of gives you a lot of variety all in one singular plant. So I love these guys. And again, super, super easy to find, just like the peace lily that I mentioned before, very easy to find at your local Home Depot, big box store, or your local nurseries. You can definitely find these guys. And if you can't, look online, because you'll definitely be able to find one online, and I'm sure for a really reasonable price, for a good size plant. This is just growing in water here, this particular specimen, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, 
I wouldn't call her a specimen quite yet. Not, not quite yet, but she's beautiful nonetheless. So yeah, definitely grab yourself a Marble Queen Pothos if you are a new plant parent. Some of the things she's gonna teach you as well is kind of like that peace lily. It will get really droopy when it's thirsty, but the leaves will also get really, really thin. I actually do have another example of a plant that gets really thin leaves as well as the droopy leaves. So, and you'll be able to like, you'll be able to tell. But this guy here is living in water, like I said, so he never really gets droopy leaves unless the water level gets like really, really low. So, I don't really have to worry about that with this particular plant, but this plant will get very, very droopy. And along with kind of teaching you how to read signs for when it's thirsty or when it's not, this plant will also kind of teach you about variegation and how it works with this plant in particular, which is with light mostly, at least that's what I found. I haven't really found much of a difference with adding um, heat or, well, maybe a little bit of difference with humidity. You might get some more aerial root growth, but I haven't really noticed a difference with heat. Um, but these guys will change like their level of irrigation depending on how much light you're giving them. So if they're getting really, really nice bright light, like this guy is here, then pretty much all of the leaves are gonna be coming out beautifully variegated all very different looking. They're like snowflakes, don't you know? And um, and then yeah, if you pull it away from the light, give it a, put it in a darker corner or something like that, you will start to notice that the new growth will have less and less variegation. And then you can cut it and start fresh or stick it in a new spot. Or if you like the way it looks, just keep it there, whatever. Either way though, this plant will definitely teach you a little bit about variegation and just how to manage it in your plants. So yeah, definitely run out and look for a Marble Queen Pothos. Yeah. <laughs> For the record too, you will get that same kind of like learning situation happening with the variegation with a golden pothos as well because it will start to lose that golden yellow variegation and just turn into like a jade pothos essentially. So just wanted to note that out as well in case you aren't loving the look of this one but you do love the look of a golden pothos. Same kind of, same kind of idea going on there. <laughs> So the next plant that I want to talk to you guys about here for the plant that I think everyone should grow, especially new plant parents, is going to be the Hoya pubicalix. Isn't this one so cute? So I'm pretty certain this was just labeled as like a standard Hoya pubicalix or maybe pubicalix splash or something. Um, but as you'll notice, the new leaves come in very dark purple. You see that there? Very, very pretty leaves, but very different color. Um, but what I'm saying goes for any type of pubicalyx, whether it is the Silver Splash, the Royal Hawaiian or Purple Hawaiian or whatever this is called, um, it, all, it all stands the same. So the reason I think everyone needs to try growing one of these, the tendrils are just like going everywhere, but <laughs> it's a Hoya. So I feel like it's a really great kind of introduction to Hoya because not only is it going to teach you kind of how Hoya like to work, um, which is having really nice, bright, um, indirect, maybe a little bit of direct light, but mostly bright indirect light. They also like to um, water out in between drying, or excuse me, they like to water out in between dryings. Is that what I was just gonna say? What? They like to dry out in between waterings as well. So this will kind of teach you that. I found um, when I first started trying to grow Hoya, um, I was being told by a lot of different people on the interwebs um, that Hoya like to be bone ass dry, like so, 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 so dry. Which in my case, I don't find to be true. Um, I find that they do like to dry out, you know, almost all the way. I would say maybe 80 to 90% of the way dry, but they do, they do like to be watered. I found that they were just not growing at all when I was like letting them get very, very, very dry before watering, like treating it like a ZZ plant or something almost. But as soon as I started watering them more regularly, they started growing more regularly. So what do you know? Plants like water. Um, but the Hoya is such a cool plant because it really just is a different growth pattern to all of the other plants that we're talking about today because it grows these long, weird tendril branch things that will eventually grow leaves on them. But I feel like it's a really kind of interesting plant to start growing in your home because it just kind of teaches you a different growth pattern to watch out for. And then of course, Hoyas do flower, beautiful, beautiful flowers. I've only ever had 
one of my Hoya flower before my Hoya Carnosa and it is stunning. The flowers are so, so pretty. So if you are lucky enough to have your Hoya bloom for you, that of course is a major plus. But even if they don't, they're still such beautiful plants. And I feel like they're pretty fast growers as well especially when it comes to these long tendrils. These guys pop off very, very quickly, and it's so fun to watch them like wrap their way around whatever happens to be around them. This guy, can you see? Oh, where is he? Might be able to tell. Maybe if I, how do, how do I hold this so you can see? This guy was like all curly cued right in the center here because he was wrapped around one of my shelves, my wire shelves in the greenhouse, and he's just loving it. Another reason I think the pubic calyx is such a cool plant to grow is because there are so many different varieties. Like I said, this is the Royal Hawaiian or something like that. I also have the like super silver splash or something. Um, there are so many different kinds, so many different other kinds as well that like I don't even know about, I'm sure. Um, and they all are gonna grow pretty darn similar. They're all gonna want pretty much the same conditions. And this is also a really satisfying plant, especially for a new plant parent to grow because not only is it a pretty fast grower, given those right conditions, even if it's not growing really fast, when it does grow, it's so interesting to watch. It's kind of like an anthurium, which, we will be talking about one of those soon as well. But it, the way I say it's kind of like an anthurium is because the leaves come out, let me show you an example here. They come out pretty small. Like do you see these two right here? They come out pretty small. This particular variety comes out purple, like I said. Um, and then it will, they will like slowly expand. Where's my bigger one here? They'll slowly start to expand and get bigger and bigger and then they'll slowly start to change color as well and go from whatever their starting emergent color was to their final ending growth color. They're like mature growth color, which for this plant is kind of more like a limey green. It's definitely a brighter green than I would say that my like other pubic is, which is super interesting. Um, but yeah, it just gives you more visual interest, which I always appreciate. And I will say that my super silver splash or whatever you want to call it, um, my other pubic calyx, the leaves do come out a slightly darker color as well. So it still gives you some good visual interest. And of course, the size up happens too as they mature, which is so cool to watch. So yeah, I love these guys. And these are plants too that grow in multiple different ways so that you can have these trailing. Although I will say you're probably gonna end up finding these little curly Q guys trying to wrap their way around like anything and anything that's around them. So even if you do have them just hanging down, they might worm their way up somewhere, but they also do beautifully on a trellis too. So these guys are awesome. Definitely check out your Hoyo pubic calyx at your local nurseries. Actually, I found this, I think, at like a Trader Joe's. So check out your grocery stores and your big box stores too. You'll find them. Okay, so I'm very excited to tell you about the next plant here because it is one that I don't feel like I hear anyone recommending or talking about for new plant parents to try. And I feel like it's because it's kind of intimidating seeming or intimidating looking. Um, the prices used to be really, really high, just kind of overall, but Prices are slowly but surely coming down on these particular anthurium and others kind of like it. And they're really not that scary to grow, which I honestly thought too. And that's why it took me quite a while to even get my, to even like think about trying an anthurium. I did not, I was not trying it. And also I wasn't finding them anywhere near me anywhere. So I would have had to order it, which I'm less afraid to do now, but I am seeing these more and more in my local uh, what are they called? Local nurseries. So let me just show you the plant here. Ah, this guy here, we are, I think, losing our oldest leaf here slowly but surely, but it's only natural. So this is the Anthurium crystallinum. Now, can we just look at her for a second? This is our newest leaf. So it is still growing and hardening off and it has that um, kind of chocolatey, bronzy emergent color. It was really, really red when it first came out. And then this is our second to last leaf, which has just hardened off. It's still really, really dark green. It will, I think, lighten up ever so slightly to this kind of color. Um, and then eventually when they start dying off, 
this color. But the reason I think that this is a great plant or great kind of like starter anthurium or starter plant, maybe not starter plant, but a great starter anthurium for newer plant parents is because for an anthurium, I find this guy really, really easy to take care of. It, it's, it hasn't really acted much different than any of my other house plants. And I will say I do have another anthurium crystallinum that I keep outside of a greenhouse, whereas this guy is in greenhouse conditions. I do have one that is just in regular household conditions and she's doing amazing. So these guys could be grown under just regular household humidity, household heat. Um, I find they're fine if they get a little draft here and there. They're really not that picky. Um, I will say though, they do not tell you when they're thirsty based on the leaves. The leaves do not droop. They don't get thin feeling, at least not that I've noticed. Um, it doesn't really do anything like that. So you just have to kind of feel the pot, feel the soil, look at the, look and see if the soil visually looks like it's damp. Um, I usually just like to pick up the pot, see how it feels. If it feels really light, I'll give it some water. But um, care-wise for these guys, I have found, like I said, I, I take care of them kind of like I take care of all of my other plants, which I kind of pretend that all of my plants are philodendron. <laughs> Maybe that's bad, but that's just like kind of how I find that I treat pretty much all of my plants is the same way I treat philodendron, which is I water them when they are mostly dry, not completely, completely bone dry, if I can help it, but when they're mostly dry. So when they're like feeling pretty darn light, there might be a little bit of moisture like down in the bottom here still that I can't feel. But when it gets to that point, I'm going to go ahead and give it a water. I will say I have found with anthurium that they do appreciate a light amount of water, excuse me, a light amount of feeding with every single watering. Um, I think that this leaf here, this is the one that's dying off here. I feel like it kind of shows some signs of nutrient um, deficiency because of this kind of weird splotchy yellowing color here because I did skip on um, fertilizing for a couple waterings in a row, which was not great. He didn't appreciate that, but as long as you are keeping up on your watering and feeding, this plant is gonna be really, really happy. And that is actually another reason why I think the Anthurium crystallinum is a great kind of starter Anthurium for beginning plant parents is because it really teaches you the real benefits, the visual benefits of using plant food because these guys really appreciate it. When they don't get the proper nutrients that they want, they will start to kind of get yellowing, crisping, they'll start to show signs of irritation essentially. And then once you start giving the food that they want, giving them, and it's nothing crazy, you don't have to like go out and find like specific anthurium food. I don't use anything specific. I really don't even, look at what's in it that much. Let's be honest, the stuff I'm using currently, I got for free um, from the grow store that we go to, which was super, super kind of them. They're always giving away free samples. Um, but, and then I, I've been using CalMag as well, which I will say um, it's actually CalMag Plus. I think it's like potassium or something. Um, but I will say that using CalMag, I was just using that by itself for a while, works wonders. So if you are wanting to try Anthurium and you are really, really scared about wanting to make sure that you are feeding it well, I would just start there. I would use CalMag Plus just as a good base starting point. So I will link that in the description for you guys below in case you are interested in that. Um, you can check that out for yourself. I'm sure they sell it on Amazon. I think that's probably where we buy it um, if they're out you know, at the grocery store that we go to. So I'll definitely link the CalMag Plus for you guys down below. Um, but yeah, other than wanting a little bit of food here and there and watered when it's not completely dry, these guys are so, so easy to take care of. And another reason that I think every new plant parent should try one of these and don't be scared to try one of these, besides the fact that like prices are starting to come down, you can find Crystallinum pretty easily for under $50 now and sometimes even under like $30, which is really cool. They're so satisfying to grow. So like I mentioned with the pubicalyx, these guys will start off small, start off as a different color than they'll harden off as, and they'll slowly but surely 
expand, get larger, and the color will change as they mature. And it is just so, so satisfying to watch grow. It just gives you like something to look forward to every day. You just like, you wake up and you go and you check on your plant and see, oh, what size is she today? What color is she today? And it's just, it's so crazy. And I swear, sometimes you'll notice a difference from the morning to the evening. Like, it's crazy. It's so, so cool. Oh my gosh. I can't speak highly enough of these. One thing I will say as like kind of a care tip for these guys that I found out from you guys commenting on my videos, so shout out you guys, you guys are freaking awesome, is if you are feeling like you're not really seeing any growth yet or you're, it's just kind of feeling like nothing's really going on or you feel like something's maybe even going downhill with your anthurium, don't be scared it will turn around. I actually have an anthurium stump right now and I was like, uh oh, she gonna be dead. And sure as shit, she's popping out a new leaf right now. So all good, no worries. But if you do feel like you are having issues with your anthurium and it's just nothing's really happening or whatever, try putting some damp sphagnum moss around the base chunk here that is like outside of the soil. Wrap that in some cellophane and you will start to see, how can I show this to you? you will start to see aerial roots popping out. You see those over here? And that's gonna speed up the growth of your plant. It's some sort of magic, I don't even know. It's some sort of plant magic, it's incredible. It makes the plant so, so happy. I feel like it makes the plant feel like it is more secure to keep growing upward. And I have found that it really, is that a new leaf? Not yet. I have found that it really helps my plants thrive so much more. So definitely try that little trick. If you are scared, even if you're not having any issues with your anthurium, I would still try that little trick because I think you're gonna benefit from it. But yeah, definitely think about trying an anthurium crystallinum. Oh, I did also wanna mention, I have heard, I don't have one of these in my collection yet, but I have heard that, that um, the Anthurium clarinervium, which I'll pop a picture up over here, um, I have heard that that plant is another really, really great like starting Anthurium. Um, I feel like it probably has pretty much the same care needs as the Crystallinum, very, very easy. Water when it gets almost fully dry, feed a little bit with every watering, give her a little moss topper, she'll be happy. All right, the last plant that I wanna to talk to you guys about today looks really sad. <laughs> I'm not gonna to lie to you. She looks, she doesn't look happy right now. She's just really thirsty. So it's a really good example actually of what a really thirsty plant can look like and what to look out for as a new plant parent. So no harm, no foul. The last plant that I wanna to talk to you guys about that I think every new plant parent needs to grow in their collection at least once, if not, always and forever, is a philodendron Brazil. Now, I feel like I talk about this plant all the time and I'm not even sorry about it because I just love this plant. I, it's one of those plants that like, oh, I guess I'll show her to you. Philodendron Brazil, I'm just like over here looking at it. <laughs> I'll show her to you too. You can tell she's very thirsty, but we'll get to that. So the Brazil is one of those plants that like I, I think forever will have such a hard time passing up when I see one for like a really cheap price at a grocery store or at a nursery or something. I always wanna buy it because they always look different from one another. Like, and I'm not even talking like the other varieties like the Silver Stripe or the Rio or the whatever. I'm just talking the straight up Brazil. They all look so different from one another and they're so beautiful and I just, ah, I love it. So let me show you here what I mean by a thirsty plant. Okay, so here's this one. She's looking very droopy and thirsty. I have another Brazil that's literally right across from me right now. She's too big for me to pick up and show you. So I'm gonna get some pretty footage of her and I will put it on screen next to me so that you can see the difference in what a nice, well-watered, uh, not thirsty Brazil looks like compared to a really thirsty, droopy Brazil. So, you see what we're talking about? <laughs> She's pretty droopy. Yeah, looking pretty sad. This guy is looking much better. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's one of the reasons, once again, that this is such a great plant for any new house plant 
<laughs> for any new houseplant parent, <laughs> there we go, because it is so, so vocal. Unlike the pubicalyx, unlike the Anthurium crystallinum or Clarinervium, if you want to go that route, um, this is going to be very, very vocal. So, and this is the same thing that if you have a, um, what were we talking about here? This guy that's right behind me, the Marble Queen Pothos. If you have one of these guys, it's gonna essentially do the same kind of thing. So, where's a good leaf? I guess this one is. Do you see how the leaf just looks like thin? Not only does it look droopy, it looks a little bit thinner even. Like, I don't know. It's definitely thinner to the touch. I don't know if it comes across on camera, but it for sure feels thinner. Um, but it's just another sign. So if you are, ooh, if you're a plant toucher like I am, how weird does that sound? Plant groper, that's worse. If you're a plant toucher like I am, you'll definitely notice this when you're going around and you're just like touching all your plants. I don't know, you'll notice like, oh, this feels kind of different. This feels weird. This doesn't feel quite right. And then you'll really start to look at it and you'll realize like, oh, okay. She does look pretty darn thirsty, doesn't she? <laughs> I think that is something that is so important to have in your collection, especially as a starter plant collector, because it's just a really good thing to be able to visually know when your plant needs something, because otherwise, it will just like slowly wither and weigh and die. So I feel like having plants like the like the Brazil, like the Marble Queen Pothos, like the Peace Lily that are very, very dramatic, but also very resilient and very forgiving. All of those plants are super, super, I mean, all of the plants that I've mentioned today are very forgiving, very durable plants that if you do skip a few waterings because you weren't paying attention, life got busy, you just didn't realize, whatever, um, you know, it'll be okay. We might lose some leaves. I think I plucked like, I shouldn't have, I should have waited for you to see, but I think I plucked like three dead leaves out of the top of here. There's a couple more. It's fine. Oh, I'm gonna regret tossing those on the ground later, but <laughs> it's really not a big deal and they will continue to grow and thrive and not be super and not be super pissy at you, you know? They're not gonna, they're not plants that hold a grudge, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They're very forgiving. They will, um, they'll be okay. And it's just like, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, can I show you this leaf? Look how pretty, oh. There was another one. All the leaves look just so sad right now. So to wrap it up for the philodendron Brazil, she's really talkative, she's beautiful, she's unique. You never know what you're gonna get. Oh, I almost forgot to mention too, these guys will also revert back to just a standard green heart leaf philodendron or your philodendron heteraceum. So do be wary of that. They do want nice, bright, indirect light, but you'll notice similar to the um, Marble Queen Pothos, like I was mentioning, you'll notice that if you do have this guy in a darker spot, that the new leaves will start to come out less and less variegated. Um, what I find will happen is the little like pretty variegation down the center will get smaller and smaller until it's just a plain dark green leaf, which is still absolutely beautiful. But if you do want to get back that variegation, I would suggest chopping that strand back to where it was last variegated and then putting it into a brighter spot in your house. And then you should start to see some better variegated leaves coming through shortly. So yeah, awesome plant. Definitely talkative, definitely cheap too. You can find these Maybe I shouldn't say cheap. I don't know. I don't find the word cheap offensive, but if you do, very inexpensive. And um, yeah, you can find these literally everywhere. I found a hanging pot. Like, I think it was actually bigger than this one. It was like a eight or 10 inch pot or something. This is like a six inch pot for like $13 at King Supers the other day or my local Kroger store. So definitely be on the lookout for Philodendron Brazil anywhere and anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. There we go. <laughs> and be on the lookout for philodendron Brazil anywhere and everywhere that they sell plants. And even if they don't sell plants, they might sell a Brazil. So check it out. All right, you guys, I think that is going to do it for the five house plants that I think every plant parent should grow, especially you new plant parents out there. I honestly, I've been collecting plants for like almost over three years now, and I would still consider myself to be a new 
new plant parent. So I think anyone and everyone should grow these plants to help grow your green thumb and just help grow your collection and your knowledge of your plants. Let me know what you guys think of my picks down below. Thank you guys so much for joining me with this video and I will see you guys in the next one.